cancer that never was. And what was really hard, again, I don't want to spend the entire night talking about COVID, but what was really hard about that concert being canceled is that at the time being when we first went on our two-week quarantine, remember that? Um, for that two-week period, they all continued practicing. And this was a piece, this next piece that's coming up, was a piece that Corel was slotted to do that they all fell in love with. It's about a, a woman who goes to the edge of the world uh, to express herself, and then all of a sudden she's met with all of the barriers that she has mentally, and she loses her song. And oh my gosh, that hit us. Last year, when we had so much to give, and then we couldn't. And at the very end of this piece, it has a total change where she finds the words, and but will she be brave enough to share them, and will she be accepted if she does? Um, it's so, such a meaningful piece, and so I was gonna not let them do it this year, uh, because it's not fair to the seniors that didn't get a chance, but uh, they were all mad at me for not giving them another chance, and so uh, we're gonna present to you one song from the concert that never was. So here's the song of Miriam. We were brave enough to share those words, and those words got us invited to MMEA. And so I remember being in the car and I saw it on Facebook and I was so excited. And I was like, this didn't click with me until like we were actually doing the MMEA music. And I was like, oh my God, we're actually going to MMEA. So what songs did you submit for Corral to go to MMEA? Oh, for like the audition? Yeah. You can send up to three. Mm -hmm. So you have to sing two, you can send up to three. So I know I did Psalm 150, which is from two years ago. Song of Miriam was from last year. And then I want to say I also submitted Flying Soul. So it was important for me to choose ones that were accurate for us, but also that showed the range. But I didn't want to just do stuff from two years ago and the year before when we weren't masked. Mm -hmm. I wanted to do stuff that showed where we currently were, uh, even with it. So um, in Song of Miriam, we were distanced. We were six foot wearing masks in that audition. Uh -huh. So I like that. journey of MMEA. We start with truth, which is the foundation of the program, and it's like, the whole point is you are beautiful and you are enough, and that is the truth. that it's planted by the people there, right? Mm -hmm. It's planted in this time in your life. Middle school sucks for everybody. And every person in that audience is gonna be like, yeah, the school bus, school right? The thing is because of the school bus that a lot of kids drop out in their own school. <laughs> and then, Ponta, yes? Yes. This piece is an absolute absurdity. When we heard it for the first time, we were all completely blown away. It was me and Audrey and Tia sitting on the floor during treble choir, listening to this piece that had choreography. <laughs> had these crazy high and low notes and these time signature changes. <laughs> 
So Jim Papoulis is the composer that wrote Ponte Rei, which is the hardest piece that we have on our MMEA set list. Um, he's wrote pieces for Beyonce and all these other famous people. And basically Baird reached out to him and was like, oh yeah, do you have any tips uh, for working on this piece? Like it's really hard and my girls are kind of struggling with it. And he was like, oh, well, I'm gonna be in town for Metro Weight. Why don't I just come and work with you guys? And so at that point we had had a month of work on the piece and then we had a month left to get it right so that he could come and mess with it, which was of course a big stressor. Okay, Audrey, it is October 13th. Uh, so we have less than a month until Jim comes in yes. to work on Pottery. How are you feeling about it? A little nervous, because we're definitely not there yet. But we'll get there. It's gonna be great. Yeah, we're like halfway done yeah. with pottery at this point. We have it one day, and then the next day we try it, and we don't have it, but then we have it the next day. Yeah, it's, it's kind of a struggle. We're gonna be fine. <laughs> fine. Gonna we're be gonna great. be fine. <laughs> Are you feeling that uh, Jim comes in to work on pottery uh -huh. in less than a month? Uh -huh. I think it's. Uh, I don't know, fam. <laughs> You're nervous. It's, it's a. It's a thing. Yeah. <laughs> Um, how am I feeling? I'm a little stressed. I feel like I'm not as prepared with that piece, which is making you guys not as prepared on that piece. And I feel like the mentality around that one is that it's like, too crazy hard and it's not we have like this mental block so i think if we could just bust through that then we'll be fine yeah we just have to bust through it like tomorrow yeah <laughs> and then we'll be fine and how are you feeling on uh the new piece that we got today awesome it's gonna be great yeah i love it i don't think it's gonna that was not gonna be hard yeah because although it's super complex you like listening to it. Pantare, yeah. people just like freak out with it and you don't want to listen to it. <laughs> and so then you're not, it's not in your head as much. Yeah. But this one, you're just going to want it on repeat, which means you're going to learn your parts super fast. Yeah. Because it's an awesome. <laughs> you couldn't get Hallelujah and you kind of had a, like mental breakdown. a panic. So I found Hallelujah on a YouTube playlist of. BYU women's group and I was I totally fell in love with it because I liked how at the end of the story of what we were telling it ended with and it's gonna get better you know that we were kind of talking about this journey that we were currently on and talking about the grief and the struggles but that we had hope for the future and hallelujah is more um, a future beyond this world like the world sucks but it's one day we're gonna not be here and it's gonna be better when i found out that i couldn't have hallelujah i was very frustrated with reason and um <laughs> that, that morning i had got an email that said that i couldn't have it i kind of started looking beforehand because it was delayed and delayed and delayed and i was starting to get stressed out that i wasn't gonna have time to learn it but I needed something, I'd already planned out the whole rest of the program. So it had to fit very specific criteria. It had to be major, had to be um, a beat, had to fit with the storyline, had to sound like a closer to like force people out of their seats in a closet. And so um, I was really stressing about it. And I had looked, I can't even tell you, I probably listened to over a hundred pieces trying to find something that fit all those categories. I just didn't love anything. Um, and so I went to a different website that's like a self-published composer's website. It's not a big publisher. Um, and so then I started just playing around, um, clicking links while I was doing other things in the morning before school. And I heard this one and I thought, hmm, I like that. And so I started it again. I listened to the whole thing. I listened to it again, and I liked it even more. And then I listened to it again, and I went, oh my gosh, this is it. It fits everything I need. I loved the piece anyway, um, but I also just felt like this 
like I hate to use the word euphoria, but it was that kind of a feel where it was like that that stress and the weight of finding this piece was like lifted off. Like this is it, you can breathe again. And so literally that morning, I bought it online. It was an e-print, so I printed it off. I made copies. I made park tracks. This all happened before 7:30 that morning, and um, I'm so glad that I did because I still love it. After we've worked on it for so many months, we've performed it so many times. Like I still love it every single time I hear it. I like when I rise so much more for everybody because it wasn't the text change when I when I shared it with you this morning and we talked about it. Um, I said that because the day after I chose it, how it really came about. And so then the question was, well, what do we do? Hallelujah is a little bit shorter, blah, blah, blah. What should we do? And we kind of analyze it. And hallelujah, the concept textually is that it will get better beyond this world. And when I rise, talks more about I've learned from all of this trauma and this grief and this process, and I'm better because of it now. Um, and I like that concept so much more because... I, I don't want my students, I don't want me to wait until the life is over to really feel like I can have joy and peace and uh, comfort and freedom and all of the things that When I Rise talks about. I don't want to wait until beyond this life to get there. Um, so I liked that part. I also liked that it was able to use the soloist. I also liked that it was accompanied. I think it was better if I if I think about it. I, I liked the story. It gave us more of a, a bookended close for it um, instead of leaving it open. And so yeah, I would I would say that it was better in the long run. So it was the right choice. It just the process to get there was frustrating, but it was worth it. <laughs> Now by itself, it's simple. Yeah. And everything else is flying around. It's, it's, it's really whenever it goes back to seven, eight, because it goes three, four, and then it goes two, four, and then it goes seven, eight, and I don't know what I'm doing. So it's so it's ready again. Panta, ready, panta. Panta, ready, panta. Speak that with me. One, two, go. Panta, ready, panta. Make it group. Panta, ready, panta. Panta, ready, panta. COVID times because that was really great. I'll, I will just Was say. that your first clinic? That was my first clinic. Yes, it was because I've only been doing Queen Choir for a year. And I actually feel a little better prepared for tomorrow because Metro A is tomorrow. Oh, yay. So I feel yeah, a little yeah, bit yeah. like, okay, I'm feeling the clinic vibes. Yeah, yeah. Bolin, what did you think of that? I thought that was fantastic. Yeah, it was, it was awesome. It was intense. It was so intense. I saw you over there. You were like, <laughs> I really enjoyed it, but you were like, I'm just trying to follow. You, know, you, you were like, uh, <laughs> going through. <laughs> Dakota, what did you think of that clinic? I don't know. Was that cool? I gotta get a good shot of the boot, too. <laughs> We're so cool. Yeah, I mean, like, I love to swear in the documentary. Yes. <gasps> the badass women. Yeah, the badass women. Yeah. He told us, like, like the whole, like, envision, like, being in a rock show and, like, yeah, fog machines and everything. And we're, like, we're making, weird. like, we're making a statement. <laughs>
Antigua, and then you get to San Miriam, and you're just like sad. So sad. <laughs> like, so sad. So emotional. Which is and, the same thing as two moon songs, where it's like everything is scary and everything sucks. And... G. G. I love one note. Mm -hmm. okay. If I think I know what's in your form, just <laughs> Likely story. <laughs> And then two moon songs. Yes, two moon songs. I know that you are deeply connected to Oh, um, I've done it for what? Like ever since sophomore year? so much but I'm growing out of it and it will not hurt me when I am old. Like yeah, I am in a spot right now that's really hard. Yeah that's how I connected to it the most. Yeah. Twelve rehearsals left, Barrett. How are we feeling? Fine. <laughs> I feel fine. <laughs> totally not stressing. It's, it's again. It's not the music that I'm worried about at this point. It's the logistics. Yeah. So the logistics has still got me trying to figure out the program and. Is your checklist almost done? We're getting there. We're getting there. We're getting there. We're improvements. Small yeah, improvements. Yeah, I totally scrapped the whole program cover. This morning. Oh my god. I hated it. <laughs> it's but gonna change the cover that means that I have to change most of it. I have to change some other things on the inside. It'll be fine. <laughs> It'll be fine. <laughs>
internally, you're all just stacked chords. Just sing your first three notes, just E, four, ma, and listen to the tuning. One, and go! E, four, ma. Yeah, try one more time. Really dial it in. No sliding, no gliding, no guessing. Hear it before you get there, and then snap right to it. Ready, and go. E, four, ma. How we feeling before the first full run? Mostly good. There's a few songs that we haven't run in a while, so um, those are gonna be interesting. We'll see how that goes. Yeah. Anna, how you feeling before the first full run? I'm feeling great. How you feeling, Baron? I'm good at budgets. I'm, I'm good at professionalism, go. so I. conference thing where I mean me and Rebecca competed Sammy competed in improv and Anna too um so like we were doing all that and then we came back had like two days of school and then we left for MMA <laughs> concert bears like okay i have a surprise for you and knowing barrett i was like oh okay prepare to cry she got us these beautiful little rings that pretty much everyone in corral wears all the time um and they say i am enough i definitely started crying she handed them out like right before the preview concert and like then our parents came on came in and it was like oh <laughs> doing this we're finding more core and also activating where we need to support it Ready? Two, three, four. Now let's do your whole line that way. Five, six, ready, and. That's time. I feel different to you. It sounds different to me. We're on the bus. On the bus. When we got on the bus, it was like, oh, here we go. And kind of like I talked about earlier, like just the sigh of like, okay, we're here, we're doing it, we're all here, no one got quarantined, like it's gonna be fine. The dog. <laughs> survived the bus ride. We are at Margaritaville. We are hungry. We are hungry. We are ready to eat. 
it's very exciting. We're ready. We're here, guys. But we'll just tuck you in right next to him, and I'll be back a little bit further, like towards the back of the section. The piano comes out straight. Piano is insane. <laughs> oh yeah, because that's a full grand. Yeah, yeah I've never seen one like in yeah, person yeah. ever. Is that a Steinway Grand seven foot by nine foot? Classy nine foot grand Steinway piano. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. Might be a custom, but I'm not sure it's better than one that I saw before. And uh, yeah. Are you freaking out right now? A little bit. Are you? Are you definitely over two hundred thousand dollars sitting over there? Yeah. Are you like swooning over the piano? A little bit. <laughs> you know, uh, I feel a little sad for your girlfriend, but... <laughs> How do you feel right now if I said the words, it's Everyone just a piano? I would scream. <laughs> Matt, it's just a piano. <laughs> it's more than Yeah, that's going to be your book. Wait. <laughs> We're recording that. There. Serial <laughs> girl place to practice. It smells like nice hotel in here. Yes, and I like it.